Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an integral equation. I know integral equations are quite complicated and there's a huge theory behind it. Uh, well, since f of x is under the you know integral sign, I just call these integral equations. But anyways, we're going to turn this into a differential equation by differentiating both sides. Okay, that makes sense, right? So we have an uh, integral, indeterminate uh, integral, and we are going to differentiate both sides because if you differentiate an integral, you get you basically get what's inside. All right, great. Since we don't know what f of x is, we wouldn't really know what f of x over x is and we couldn't really integrate it to find the answer. All right, great. So let's go ahead and differentiate both sides. Awesome. When we differentiate both sides, the integral symbol is just going to disappear. We're going to end up with f of x over x. On the right hand side, we need to differentiate a product. So we're going to use the product rule. And the product rule goes as follows. If you're trying to differentiate u times v, it's u prime v plus v prime u. Okay. So we're going to differentiate x, that's 1, multiply by f of x. And the derivative of f of x, which is f prime multiply by x, and c is a constant, I just put it there for fun, you know, uh, c could be 0, anything, anything constant, and when you differentiate a constant, you're going to get 0, because the constant never changes, right? Okay, now, let's simplify this a little bit by multiplying both sides by x, obviously x should not equal 0, so that's going to give us x f of x plus x squared times f prime of x. Great. Now we can go ahead and replace f of x with y, right? If we set f of x equals y, that's going to give us something like this. And of course, f of uh, f prime is going to be y prime. And we're going to get the following. y equals xy plus x squared y prime. Obviously, I do want to simplify this expression. And how can I simplify it? Well, to simplify this, uh, we're going to... Uh, replace y prime with dy over dx and we're going to try to make it or turn it into a separable differential equation. Let's see if we can do that. So let's start with um, xy plus, maybe I'll write the x squared y prime first. So x squared multiplied by dy over dx plus xy is equal to y. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and subtract xy from both sides. You know, doing a little bit of algebra. And now I can factor out, I can factor out a y on the right hand side, and I'll get 1 minus x. Now notice that we can turn this into a separable equation because now everything is separated. Let's bring the y over to the left, so it's going to be dy over y. And then let's go ahead and bring the dx and the x squared and the 1 minus x is just going to stay. So we're going to end up with 1 minus x over x squared times dx. Great. So now uh, we can integrate. Now when we get a separable differential equation, those are very easy to solve. Uh, for example, um, y dy equals x dx is another one. You know, you can just integrate both sides. When we integrate both sides, uh, the integral of um, dy over y is just going to be uh, ln, but uh, let's use absolute value. It doesn't matter at the end. We're going to get rid of them anyways. ln uh, of absolute value of y. I'm going to save the constant for the right-hand side. Now here, what makes integration easier is we can kind of separate these, right, into two pieces like this. So now 1 over x squared is, think about the derivative of 1 over x. Isn't that negative 1 over x squared? So the integral of 1 over x squared, since the derivative of 1 over x is negative 1 over x squared, the integral of 1 over x squared is just going to be negative 1 over x. Awesome. Minus 1 over x. How do you integrate 1 over x? It's ln, right? So we're going to write this as ln absolute value of x. And at the end, we're going to add our constant. But c was already used, so I'm going to use k for this one. Great. Now, we have ln of something, but we would like to find f of x, which is y. So let's go ahead and e to the power both sides. So when you e to the power both sides, you're going to get e to the power ln absolute value of y equals e to the power negative 1 over x minus ln absolute value of x plus k. Obviously, e to the power k can be separated, and that's going to become a constant. We'll take care of that in the next step. 
Great. Now, what is e to the power of ln something? e to the power of ln something is something. So this is absolute value of y. And now e to the power k can be written as m, which is a constant. So we can write it as m and then multiply that by e to the power negative 1 over x and then multiply that by e to the power negative ln absolute value of x. But can I write it as ln 1 over absolute value of x because uh, that becomes absolute value of x to the power negative 1. I hope you don't mind me skipping that step. If you do, I can just go ahead and show that here real quick. So we get e to the power uh, negative ln absolute value of x and that is going to equal, let's see, uh, this is going to be m, this is going to be the same, and I can just write this as e to the power ln x to the power negative 1, and now that's going to become, that is going to become uh, e to the power ln 1 over absolute value of x, because the power negative 1 is just going to flip it, right? And now e to the power ln something is just something, so another thing or, or another thing. Uh, that's going to become 1 over absolute value of x. So I can write it as m e to the power negative 1 over x divided by absolute value of x. And this just means that we can get rid of the absolute value by including the plus minus sign here and then plus minus m. And obviously uh, I have uh, a negative power so I can also write it like this, right? I can put that at the bottom. But since m is an arbitrary constant, it doesn't matter if you use a plus minus sign because m can be positive and negative and maybe also zero. I don't know if I didn't check if zero is a solution. It probably is, right? Okay, we can check that at the end. But anyways, from here we get the following and let's replace m with, I don't know, n. How about that? y equals n over x times e to the power 1 over x. And we can write it as f of x equals n over x times e to the power 1 over x where n is a constant. Obviously, if you look at the original problem, I think f of x equals 0 will work because the integral of 0 is going to be a constant and that is going to be a constant. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care and bye-bye.